What's up guys? Soren Fate here for another episode of Soren Says. Today we're going to be doing some poly modeling, some very basic mapping out the first tutorial map kind of poly modeling. It's a very simple process once you know the tools. Obviously I do, which is why we did it, but there was still some problem solving, some, some hmm, I wonder if this is a better way to do this kind of talk. Um, and it took a little longer than I was expecting, but these things do take time. And these videos are more about just getting it done and talking it through and making sure that I know what I'm doing and kind of, you know, showing you guys my process and what, what, what it, what it means to me to be a, a game designer. And so we took into account the actual game. Like we actually played part of the game and like showed it on camera so that we could look at the map and figure out like what 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 elevation or things where where do certain things go so that we can later translate that into actual art assets in the coming videos we're going to do some some of that we're, we made a list of all the art assets we need for the map we're going to do some character stuff make some character sheets uh kind of get some inspiration from more modern pieces, maybe some actual photography, and, and translate that to the style that we want the game to be in. But for right now, this video is pretty long. I can already feel it. I'm, I'm about to edit it right now. And I mean, it, the, the recording took like 40, no, almost an hour. So I can't imagine it being too short. But I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everyone that's been around, you guys are great. I believe I got a notification for uh, Viviana. She's pretty cool. A couple of other people I know have subbed, but they, I don't know their username and they, it doesn't show up in my notifications. So like I've said before, if you sub, be sure to, you know, let me know, comment it, that sort of thing. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so today we are going to approach this in a different way, right? So I'm, I've got our game set up. We're, we're really here to capture the spacing and the number of blocks required for this map to exist. In addition, we all we are also going to sort of uh, keep track of what objects we need for the for like the the map assets. I'm just skipping through this while we're talking about this. Uh, that way, we can kind of go in later and create these assets and add them to our are seen later because obviously like the fence the buildings the, the snow bounds they're not gonna move we're not gonna we're not going to have player agency that requires them to move in our game in etheric we could definitely add that and i think that would be hella cool i kind of have a vision to i kind of have a vision to make player generated uh, maps that you can use your roster to kind of terraform and, and set up shops maybe create quests that sort of thing but today today we are not talking about that today we are beginning a very fun kind of experiment this map is pretty easy because it's a square uh so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so this one's super easy, which is awesome. So we're gonna wanna pull up our Maya program, and obviously I use Maya. Maya is my my baby when it comes to this sort of thing. Let's pause the game so that we don't accidentally mess this up. Uh, for the sake of starting this, I'm just gonna create a cube, and we're gonna want to duplicate it. And obviously this is just my process, you know, you do not have to do it this way. If you guys have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments, but otherwise, hang out for a second. A lot of this is trial and error, and we're just going to do this a few times, pretty much 14 times. You know, a lot of this is trial and error. We might find a easier way to do this, if anyone has any ideas. So this is kind of our first row. This map's pretty easy because it's flat. A lot of the maps have different levels and like lower terrain and like one of them that I did a few days ago has like a mountain practically with ramps going up and this one's pretty simple. We, however, we are going to want to mark these as we go along. Well, let's take a look at our game. So along this ledge, we have, along this ledge, we have two trees 
and then a fence line here which takes up two spots so we have one and then spot two and three are trees and then four five six seven eight and nine are a uh, fence so for right now i'm not going to do anything too crazy i'm just going to create a cylinder and scale it down and this is more just like a marker more than anything so we know that we can put this at one to make it above the square and we can put it at one here as well and then for this and this is what's kind of nice about these kind of maps is the fact that you can just you know make it a square now obviously when we're recreating it we're going to keep the grid like thing but the environment isn't going to be as blocky i want to make like clean curvature to buildings meeting or like mountains meeting and stuff and have like rock and ambience and things like that and just kind of have the grid added in the engine as opposed to relying on graphical grid in the original level design eight and nine have something on it we need to duplicate it so now we kind of have these markers we have our first row done we're gonna give this a try and it might not work it might not be what i want it to but i think we can group these as row one and then duplicate this and move it we should be able to do that as many times as we need this is 14. all right cool so we've now got all these individual spots super nice so now we can start going row by row to see what's going on so we've got we've got rooster man we've got the uh the weather main on this one and nothing else on this particular row we added this little spot for the weather main so let's take a look at our third row so we we do a huge jump here it's important to look at our references here so this is zero this is ground zero the lowest elevation we have we've got one here on the z-axis i guess the y-axis in this we can look at other references here we've got the one over here but we have a three with this snowman right Actually, it tells us the height. The fences are actually two up. Uh, we start at two, apparently. I, I'm guessing because the edge of the map is con like the bottom of the map is considered zero. Um, that being said, this is actually going to make this really easy. We start at two, right? And then we jump up here to nine. And because of that, we have we can now take this two space over at nine so seven up from where we're building it and it's one two three four five six seven eight eight so two by eight so let's let's go back to our maya and this is row three eight really it goes back that far i, I guess it's a long building yeah all right and it's at nine so by having it at nine that means we need to go seven up so we want to put this at seven and what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, attach these surfaces later but for now we just want to kind of get a basic uh, a basic understanding of the scale the height that we're looking for that being said let's let's go back to our game kind of examine we, we might as well do this for the cylinders as well so these are four four high and the fences i believe are two let's take a look at our maya the fences are four high let's just scale this no no we don't want to do that so we already have them at one so they need to go to three i believe yeah that looks that looks about right and then what we can do this is actually kind of a fun thing oh well maybe we can't cylinders are dumb you know what you know what? and this is this is part of the process we're not doing cylinders i remember that these are complex and stupid and so we're gonna do some cubes we're going to minimize them to half values and then we're going to put this at three or and then one i believe yeah and then we're gonna duplicate this and put it at two cool so those are our our planned trees now, if I remember correctly, it's uh, eight across, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll put it on eight. Oh, we'll put it on seven, I guess. Yeah, above this one. And we're just gonna put it at, see there are two above. These are at zero. So these these will be these will be one or two. Yeah, I guess two. Math is hard. Honestly, I don't really like that. I I'd rather just have it be Maybe one and a half. We might go in and just make that one and a half. Yeah, we're gonna do that. I like I like that I like the look of that better. And then we had another one 
over here and let's check out our weather main that's put at a six yeah there's there's no way in hell that's supposed to be taller than the trees that that's that's absurd all right and that's why we're doing this that doesn't even make sense yo that doesn't even make sense why are trees short and maybe we'll just make the trees taller you know maybe i don't know now we have the first building and the first few rows on this side do these go higher they don't so those are purely the chimneys are purely cosmetic so we now can look at four over and four back is a four yeah i can guarantee that these are supposed to be um yeah like those are supposed to be 1.5 this one's probably at two this is probably at one and this is probably a 0.5 and then this would be a 0.5 as well Okay, so we, we can we can then kind of do this row. So this is negative 10, this is negative nine. Cool, so we've got our fences kind of put together. Next, let's take a look at the this little mound of snow here. So this is a, straight across from the, the second fence here. So one, two, two, three, four, five. Some trees. One, two, three, and four. Three and four are trees going on the back row so let's pop out our okay so those are our trees let's see next we need to count out this uh wall here so the first building is going to be one two and three yeah i really i don't know man i i really this is really strange if we look and this is this is what i'm working with um if we look at the little gate thing it's about it's about the same height as the fences. So now that I think about that, yeah, we should have this at 1.5. Following that up, we have three of those, and then the fence, and then these are all the same height as the shack. And so we'll have one, two, three, and then like an L shape. And then this back building is our next step here. Our back building goes up to an 11 and then a 12. Yeah, so it's a, it's 11 on these outside ones and then a 12 at the top. Um, 11 is a whole block higher than this. So we will want to do it as eight. So that's sort of the basic layout. Let's, uh, let's make sure we didn't miss anything. I think I missed a snowman. Oh, I don't think we got this block area. So the end of the big building, one, two, so kind of a catty corner too. There's a snowman here. That's a five. Can you move to that spot? I don't think you can, but meh. We'll, we'll put it as a 0.5. And so I think we should begin the next step. So the next step is I want to do something a little controversial here. I want to combine. So now this is all one object. And so we should be able to select face this time. And then we delete. And so now we have this lovely situation where close to all of them are just floating planes. And I personally like it better this way because now, now that we have that, we can essentially go to the edge tool and select the two edges we want. And there is a lovely bridge. And so obviously this is a little monotonous. I'm probably going to cut most of this out just to spare you. Essentially, we just keep going to bridge, which I really should bind as a hotkey if I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> and what this allows us to do is we, you know, we, we could make this with just blocks. We could we could do this and and just pretend like the inside of the blocks don't matter. It gets a little strange when we want to bring it into a program like ZBrush which we are probably going to do to kind of sculpt the landscape a little bit more. We're going to wait and have more of a more of a structural idea in mind before we send it that way. In the long run, I want to set this up as early as possible to be compatible with shipping over this mesh because I have done in the past projects that look really, really cool in Maya, but are close to impossible to import. And a lot of times you end up completely having to redo the thing you're working on which is a pain in the ass obviously well now that i've kept talking i don't think i'll skip this part. it's that awkward thing where when you're working you don't even hear you don't even think about thinking or talking or anything like that it just happens and here i am filling the empty space of the episode with uh, me mindlessly chattering but hey you guys are here for my commentary right the next step is to look at this angle no 
We want to get rid of these. And we also want to get rid of these. Oh, I gotta think. Uh, we want to keep that, these two on the side, but no, we don't. We want, we want to lower this. We want to just meet these bridges. So like this will lead up to here. So, and this is our snowman. Very chill individual. If you guys have any questions about using Maya and all that jazz, hit me up. I'm not like an expert, but I'm learning. You know, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm starting to feel confident with my skills. That, and you know, when you, and this is true for a lot of things, when you're first starting out, the key, your, your biggest ally is asking questions. Unless you can suddenly figure shit out on your own without any kind of guidance, and there are people that can totally do that, and you know, prop, props to you guys. Unless you're one of those people, there's not much to be gained from, from trial and erring it yourself when there are people you can talk to to help. I mean, if you, if you, if you're trying to start a skill or a career or a t like a hobby, there is no shame in asking as many questions as you want. I know a lot of people that are really stubborn, and I used to be this way too, where you think, oh, well, I want to learn this, I want this to be my superpower, my, my talent, my skill. And I don't want anyone else to come up to me and be like, our characters are never going to go up there. And honestly, the, the only way I could really fix this is if I went back and made the cubes again, which I could. And if you guys want to see that process, I could totally show it to you. But for now, I don't really, you know, I've already gone super long. I'm just going to, and this is another example of just not caring about what's behind the curtain. And, you know, we, uh, we're going to leave it hollow behind there and then, and then build up from there and ZBrush if we need to. Okay, and from here, we don't need this face anymore because we can just do the edge thing again. All right, so we kind of have this basic polygon thing going on. It's all raw map. And so basically, we what we accomplished here is we set up the elevation. We pretty much figured out, you know, the area that we want people to be moving in. We have our trees. We, know, we kept them consistent so that we know that like this is a tree and this is a tree. We might change those later, but we know that we need certain things. So let me pull up a list. We'll go back to our Google Docs. Art assets. Let's take a look. We'll turn off our Maya. Obviously, besides the characters, we're going to need characters. We're going to need a snowman. Snow mounds. We're going to need a shed. We're going to need pine trees, flat fence, we're gonna need a post fence, we're gonna need a rooster weather main, we're gonna need the uh, little, the thing, this thing, awning. Next, we need the house, tall building, long building, pile of snow with shovel. And then let's go back one last time and make sure we got everything. Yeah, the long building, post fence, weather main, uh, awning thing. And I think that's it. We, we made our polygon. We made our list of all the art assets we're going to need. And then from here, we can start making those assets. Maybe work on some character design. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but my setup's a little different today. I have my headset on. I don't have my phone because Miss Fate, my girlfriend who lives with me, had to take my phone to a trip on one of the Channel Islands. And so she needed a phone, and her phone doesn't work. And so I am without a phone. And so today, you get to see behind the computer, Soren. Super fancy. This was great. I look forward to doing more work like this. Oh, we're going to do this with all the maps eventually because we're going to need to do that. This is kind of the, the the baseline starting reference area that we want to work with. And so it's it's very important that we, that we do this step first so that we can utilize this information in a reasonable way. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to check out my other videos if you haven't. I'm going to be posting all the time. I'm still working on the website. That's going to be a long process, but I'm just letting you guys know that there's it's still there. I'm considering streaming again, which would be probably just more gameplay type stuff, more just relaxing, hanging out with friends and stuff. But if you're interested, it's over on at Soarinfate or at Twitch. 
it to twitch.tv slash soarinfate. I think there's an end underscore. I'll put it in the description. Maybe I'll see you guys there. Yeah, and if you're interested, we also have a Discord, which I can give you guys the link to. So just let me know. Like I said, comments, they're the key. This has been an episode four of Soren Says, and I hope you have a fantastic week, my friends. Thank you.